How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. It's time to get into some animation. It's time to get those uh, creative juices flowing. It's time to get that imagination running wild. And it's time to uh, get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from H.R. Geiger. If you're not familiar with his work, check right over here. Uh, he did uh, a phenomenal uh, painter and concept artist. He worked on a bunch of um, album covers and was probably best known for being the uh, creative mind behind the Alien franchise. Uh, he also did Dune, he did some stuff with Batman, and tons and tons of other things. Um, but I'll just leak through a couple of images of his just so you get a better picture of who he was and all his amazing um, work. And again, like always, I'll uh, link to uh, more of his stuff down in the description below if you want to follow up and read further about him. Um, but yeah, just phenomenal concept work, great mind work, great composition, um, really creative and kind of twisted mind, but I love it. I love his stuff. It's really great. Um, I love the style of it. I love how free his mind is to just go into places that you know nobody had ever thought of before, and just some crazy stuff. Um, I know that he was uh, had, uh, had a lot of uh, influence and, and connection with Salvador Dali, who's also got uh, a crazy, wonderful mind, just like uh, Geiger. Definitely there's some of his stuff that is uh, probably NSFW, so just uh, be aware of that as well. But phenomenal creative mind. I could look at his stuff um, forever, and if you really see or study his work, if you go like close up on his work, the amount of detail and the levels that he works at is just mind-boggling. Just a, a phenomenal, phenomenal artist. And I wanted to share um, a quote uh, of his with you guys today too and that's uh, my pictures are my children even if I'm gone my art lives on I'm glad and I hope that it finds recognition in future generations and I think that's kind of one of the big struggles that anyone of us you or I or anyone out there who's um really creative and passionate about their work and and uh, whatever medium they're using it um probably a lot of other things are going to go on the wayside and a lot of sacrifices and um, if you really want to be good at something and focus on them uh, basically you're like you have to do your work so much that that's your legacy that you really don't have a whole slew load of, of other things that you're really good at um, the people who tend to be masters of their craft usually it doesn't mean that you don't explore other avenues and it doesn't mean that you put yourself you know lock yourself in a room forever and never talk to anybody or anything like that but just that your legacy and your 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 children are is your work and uh, i think that that's tough um and uh, but if you look at a lot of the great masters you know they left their mark because of what they did um, and you have to throw yourself behind that if you want to be really good and you have to be willing to make those sacrifices and to let other things um, go and let go of pretty much a lot of other dreams to focus on the one that you're really really passionate about and so that's why I, I talk about this all the time you know find the things that it is that you're passionate about go after them um, try out different stuff until you find the thing that clicks once you do you know it's okay then you're making sacrifices because that's the thing that you're passionate about so that being said let's um go ahead and look at our rig today this is a frog rig it's a free rig you can grab over at creative crash which i will link down below in the description um if you're not familiar with these videos again i apologize i'm still tweaking the lighting in the new setting but i think the audio is coming together a little bit better so let me know down in the comments below um but what we'll be doing for the rest of the videos we give ourselves 48 frames it's two seconds of animation i go off and i find a different rig a rig that i've never used before a rig that i can share with you guys so you can have new resources to try out and uh we kind of go from there a little bit of kind of over the shoulder hang out with me while i animate a little bit of instruction and uh overall the main goal of doing these videos is to um, make you feel like you're not alone in your creative uh, work every day. That's why we do them every day so you guys have something. Even if you don't watch the whole video, you just you know that someone else is out there um, working like you and for those same goals. And uh, I, I just hope that, uh, you know, bare minimum, maybe you learn something along the way or at least get inspired to go off. 
um, either because you learned something you want to try something different out or you look at my stuff and you're like dude I'm, I'm tons and thousand times better but uh, yeah let me show off how much better I am by by making my own stuff I don't care what I'm about is is that journey that every day working towards your dreams and I hope that you guys um, get that from these videos and hanging out with you guys every day that being said, let's go ahead and, and dive right in here. So I had a couple ideas um, for what I was going to do with this rig. One of them was kind of just a, a leapfrog kind of hop uh, where we do uh, like the front feet first and the back feet and have kind of a little bit of a back and forth bounce there. So we might try that one. The other one would be maybe more of like a pious kind of a walk. Uh, he seemed like a wise old kind of a frog to me, so I was thinking that might work too. Uh, I think I want to try doing... Uh, the bent over one just because I think that would be more fun to animate. And not that animation is always about fun, but it is sometimes. I gotta be aware this head was kind of doing some funky stuff, so I gotta be careful of that. Anyway, let's see. And we are using Autodesk Maya 2014 uh, today. And uh, remember to save multiple versions and save often, or just gonna kind of go in and, and get that first initial pose idea uh, laid down and knocked down. And then we'll see where we go from there. I thought that would be kind of fun to do here. And it's definitely rigged um, a little bit different than, than a lot of other rigs, but uh, we'll get used to it. Just the controller layout uh, isn't as straightforward as some other ones that I've used before, but I really, really like the um, character in this uh, model. I think it's got, it's very unique. Um, reminds me of kind of maybe a, a trippy Alice in Wonderland style character, um, and I really like that. Like, not like necessarily the Disney Alice in Wonderland, but uh, definitely one of those uh, fantastical creatures that you find. Um, a great series, if you've never seen it before, that I really loved was, um, oh, no, I can't, you won't be able to think of the name of it, probably. Um, it was, I think it was Jim Henson Storytellers, I want to say is the name of it. It was on Netflix a while ago, I'm not sure if it still is, but it's a phenomenal um, series, as I've probably talked about before. Um, I'm a big fan of any of the Henson stuff, I think, uh, I think it's really imaginative and really creative. Now the, I gotta be careful because we're gonna get some deformation there. So maybe what we'll do instead is we'll do kind of a Tarzan thing and have him do knuckle. Let's try and avoid some of that deformation here. Like that webbing just in one of those fingers. That's cool. It's a cool style. Make sure that we're only looking at nerve curves, nerve surfaces, and no polygons right now. Just so we're not hewing the wrong stuff here. And let's go ahead and... Oh, darn. I was hoping there would be um, separate finger controllers, like for a middle and a tip. as though there's only one, which is fine. At least we can get that one controller, but I would, would love to have, be able to break up these fingers a little bit more. Is there a curl? Let's see here. It says that this is a curl. So we should be able to do that then. All right. Cool. So we're just going to grab these guys and we can scale them back out. I like the idea of knuckles rather than like the, uh, more of the head heavy on the weight on the wrist here or the uh, hand itself. I like the idea of it being on the knuckles. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, it's getting darker in here. Got to figure out the 
this lighting situation. But that's not gonna stop. See, that's one of those things. You gotta, gotta work through whatever you got and don't give yourself excuses for not doing stuff. Just a shoulder controller. intersecting the tongue. starting pose and let's go ahead and create a uh, polygon primitives cube here and turn our grid off there as well let's go ahead and save our file again remember it's always good to save multiple versions and to save often as well I'm going to grab everything, set our frame range from 0 to 48. And let's go ahead and set our first key at 0. And let's go ahead and grab the ends there. Push them forward.
basic ideas there, so let's go ahead and get into window animation under the extract editor, set that our translate C, and then I do want a little bit of wonkiness in here, so it's got too far, so I'll probably pull that back a little bit more. Let's go ahead and look at that. I think that one could maybe be a little bit further forward. And now let's see that. I think his hand moves the second one to be further out. Maybe a little bit further. And this one I don't want that to be so much, so let's look at the translate Z here. Let's pull it back a little bit. Look at this head controller. Again, let's go ahead and make that pretty much a constant. Let's go ahead and see that now. I think that's pretty good. Okay, let's go ahead and save our file now. And let's get back in here to these passing positions on the hands here. Let's go ahead and lock in all keys we have right now, and raise it up here, close them up here, pull them back a little bit, because they're really long, so I'm not quite sure all the ins and outs of how we'll do that, but we'll figure it out here. So let's go ahead and raise them up, put them down, raise them up, and pull them down. And let's grab this guy. Let's rotate it up here. one seems a little better than the second part. So let's try to mimic that a little bit more. Okay, that's got much Just in case we have a problem. 
problems with the audio here.
Passive jaw control. Here. Uh, say our file. Like I said, it's always good to save multiple versions. I'm going to save all of them as well. So there's that little tilt into that last thing. Thank you. 
this we can do mix it so we'll do rotate up and rotate control here rotate down and take the translate steps down a little bit more and kind of merge two rotations here. Step that we had and rotate X's again. Go ahead and do that. And this is uh, kind of a blending of the two uh, controllers to get what we want rather than you know, usually only be able to you know, have to use one. Sometimes you have to. still a little bit more up because it feels like there's some part where that tip of that foot just because how it's shaped is still kind of dragging so it's hard to make that so we could actually maybe push these um, hands a little bit more forward on that first move here so that those tips of those feet don't really intersect. See right here, I don't like that. So we'll get that off. And we can just get the feet back a little bit as well. Kind of wish there's a, a belly controller that we had to really drag that belly. That'd be kind of fun. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at the uh, fingers thing. So it's going off a little too much on the overshoot, so I'll scale that back a little bit more. Just want to hint of that in there. And it's going to look kind of weird. Maybe get a little bit of recoil there.
also weapons that are being made here. And index finger will go ahead and push it forward for me. Okay. And let's look at the thumb. Go a little bit on the thumb here. Just a little bit of movement so that it feels stiff there. Again, we're just going to drag it back there. Push it out. Drag it back there. And push it out. So we'll get that pixel lock off here. Okay. And same goes with those fingers there. Just so that there's a little bit of movement on those fingers, even when it's resting. I could probably even do a little bit less than that. Is that just so those fingers don't completely lock off? Okay, and let's go to the other hand. Go here. So we're just 
get a little bit more curl. Actually stretch it out a bit. Just to overshape it. So we get a little bit of movement still in those fingers. off here. It would be fun to get more into those toes, but unfortunately that controller's kind of set up in a way that we'd really have to use two uh, controllers to really get in there. And I think we're getting to be close to about an hour or so, I'm sure. So let's go ahead and create a new camera here. Zoom in a little bit more. Zoom into that bit. Yeah, I feel like that's working pretty well. Alright, so let's look back at where we started. We're looking at HR Geiger today and uh, his phenomenal set of work. And I really challenge you guys, or uh, uh, if you haven't uh, spent a lot of time studying his work, definitely do yourself a favor and at least uh, gloss through uh, a book of his or go to his site or any sort of thing that you can do to um, study his work. He's a phenomenal artist and uh, very creative, very creative. And uh, he said, my pictures are my children. Even if I'm gone, my art lives on. I'm glad, and I hope that it finds recognition in future generations. And I think that's a tough quote and a tough thing to swallow, but I think it's true that if you really want to be good at something, if you want to be a master of your craft, that you have to dedicate a whole chunk of time and a whole chunk of your life towards mastering it. And that means sacrificing some things and giving up and saying no to some things. Um, but I think in the end, if it's really what you want to do, that it's worth it. That being said, thanks again for watching. Thanks for all the likes, comments, and subscribes, and for uh, bearing with me in these kind of transitional times till we get to uh, hopefully a better kind of a studio and everything to work with. And uh, you guys are awesome. I hope you're continuing on your journey every day. I love you lots, and we will see uh, you for some more animation tomorrow.